My wife and I had been married for 15 years. I had a good job, two kids, and my wife was a homemaker. We owned two apartments that we inherited from our parents, which we rented out for a decent income. This allowed my wife not to work since her job as a homemaker took up a lot of her time. We decided it was better for her to stay at home and focus on raising our children. Life flowed like a calm stream of happiness. I couldn't even imagine that my family life would crumble in an instant. It was a spring evening. I was at home, having tea with my wife Emily and her friend Diana. The setting sun was struggling to peek through the semi-closed curtains, creating a cozy atmosphere. Diana, Emily's friend, was a middle-aged woman of 45, but she always appeared fresh and energetic. She didn't have children, and that often became a topic of conversation. Today was no exception. You know, Emily turned to Diana. I always wondered why you don't have kids. You've always wanted to be a mom. Diana sighed and nodded. Yes, Emily, you're right. I do dream of having kids. But it seems like it's just not meant to happen. None of my suitors want to step up and become fathers. It's even become comical they take back all their contraception after spending a night at my place, thinking I'll use it against them. What about artificial insemination? Emily asked. Yes, I've thought about that. But it's such a complicated and expensive procedure. Diana replied. And on top of that, you wouldn't even know who the father is. What if it turns out to be some unstable person? There are so many of those nowadays. At this point, Emily looked at me and smiled. How about trying a different approach? For instance, Mark could help. For a moment, I didn't grasp the conversation and thought it was some odd joke. But Emily's gaze was serious, and I realized she was serious. What are you talking about? I asked trying to understand. Well, you could help Diana, Emily said. After all, we've got experience in that department. I must have looked utterly baffled at that moment. But Emily continued. Look, it's not complicated. Just go to the room. Mark knows what to do. It won't take you more than four minutes and it'll be done. Diana will get what she's been wanting for so long. I was shocked. Initially, I took it as a ridiculous idea, but then it dawned on me that Emily was actually suggesting this as a solution. Absurdity was racing through my mind. Emily, are you out of your mind? I explained, trying to hide my embarrassment. No, I'm serious, she replied. We can help Diana fulfill her dream. Dreams are meant to come true, right? I looked at Diana, who was still silent and strangely felt that I could change something in her life. My mind was racing, but I couldn't say a word. Let's give it a try, I said, as if my body was acting on its own. Emily hugged me and smiled at Diana. Well, what do you say, dear? Ready? Diana nodded. We walked into the bedroom, and I couldn't believe that this was actually happening. Maybe it was nervousness or an odd internal uncertainty, but it all happened fairly quickly, in less than four minutes. We walked out of the room, and I felt like I was in a parallel reality. That's it, I said, not quite comprehending what had just occurred. Emily and Diana hugged, their faces radiating joy and a new kind of energy. At that moment, I realized that I had helped do something important for Diana, and it would genuinely change her life. When Diana gave birth nine months later, I gave the child my last name, as it felt honest and right. But more surprises were yet to come. Emily's friend filed for child support, demanding money for the child's upbringing. The situation became even more complicated. In the end, my family with Emily fell apart. This whole story, which started as an attempt to help Diana, led to us losing each other. Perhaps my actions were not well thought out, 
Maybe I should have been more insistent and discussed everything with Emily in detail. Life sometimes teaches us crucial lessons through difficult trials. Today, I live alone, divorced from Emily, and she moved with the kids to one of the apartments we used to rent out. This story will always serve as a reminder that even the noblest intentions can lead to unpredictable consequences.